how do they make the perfect chocolate beer? Yeah, we just want it to be a pure chocolate note, like brownies. Sometimes I wonder, can you extract all the chocolate flavor? It's very challenging for the brewers who don't live in town here because we're very lucky to be able to come well, over and smell each of the I, beans. I love having you over. If you were drinking wine or eating a chocolate bar, it should be enjoyable right? and you should want some more. Correct. And that may be something you tell a brewer too is like, well, how long do you have? And then the next question is, well, what is too long? That's what you have to do is trials to get to know. The, That's it. The From a business standpoint, it's good. Hey there, uh, this is John Ancy with Chocolate Alchemy. I'm joined today uh, with uh, head brewer, uh, founder, all that good. All that thing of uh, Ale Song Brewing, uh, Matt Van Wyk. If you go ahead and just introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, Matt Van Wyk of Ale Song Brewing and Blending, as John said. Uh, we're an all barrel aged brewery um, in Eugene, Oregon. Everything we do has spend some time maturing in uh, retired wine barrels or spirits barrels. Um, and I'm one of three founders of the company, founding brewmaster, do sales, do all kinds of things as many small business owners do these days. So Matt's with us today because um, Ale Song and Matt in particular has, we, we've had a relationship, I guess, with you buying our nibs to age with some of your beers. Yep. So this one we're going to be talking about today is his, your Mocha Rhino suit. Yep, that's right. Um, have any of the nibs gone in previous beers or other beers? Yeah, so we've used um, your cocoa nibs in many different beers. Um, our base beer for this is Rhino Suit. Right. It's our Imperial Milk Stout. That typically doesn't have cocoa nibs in it, but every once in a while we might use some to, to up the chocolate notes just right. a little. Maybe the mouth feel, the body, things like that. We've got all kinds of different reasons we might use cocoa nibs. Um, but we've got one called Senior Rhino. That's a Mexican hot chocolate uh, inspired beer. Still Rhino um, though. Yeah, Still yeah. Still Rhino. It's all suit. the Rhino. So, so the variants on the Rhino got suit. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yep, that's right. And this one that you're um, referring to is Mocha Rhino suit. Um, and the samples we have today that we're going to taste are the base Rhino with cocoa nibs added. No coffee yet, but I did bring some that we've added the coffee to oh, fun. that have the nibs as well. Okay. And which what that will that make it into Mocha Rhino suit? Yeah. That's not right. senior. Right. Oh, right. Right. Okay. This, the senior Rhino has cinnamon and um, ancho chilies as well as the cocoa nibs. Oh, and vanilla bean. So I, I partly want to taste them. Sure. Um, but I want to hear. I I mean, and speaking to other brewers out there. I'm getting questions all the time for our nibs yep. uh, of how much should I buy? What should I buy? Right. And they, they're like, I've read your chocolate notes. Do those come through? And my answer, uh, I, I've been a home brewer for 20, oh my goodness, 30 years now. And the answer I always feel like I, I, I give is it depends. Yeah, that's right. What are you brewing? How big's the beer? What do you want? Yeah. And I, I feel like I'm floundering, except I, I want to give people an answer or at right. least some direction. Right. So how do they make the perfect chocolate beer? Yeah. Well, you, you, <laughs> we're, we're still working on that ourselves. <laughs> okay. uh, every time we use uh, uh, cocoa nibs in some form of chocolate. So it's, it's challenging. But I think the answer you give while frustrating is the accurate one, which is it <laughs> okay. depends. And it so depends. For, for our standpoint at Ale Song, it depends on the base beer you're using. Now, this is an imperial milk stout, so it's got some lactose, Huge. it's got also. some big body, it's 12.5%, so it is big. However, that being said, this beer also, in my opinion, and many of our customers' opinion, is also very well balanced between the bourbon and the malt and, and the cocoa nibs that we mm -hmm. had. Um, there's some imperial stouts that people are making in the craft beer world these days that are very sweet, very bold. In fact, in my opinion, too sweet and syrupy. For some of those beers, people have to use more to get the same sort of chocolate impact. Right. Um, there's one brewer locally here who uses upwards of one pound per gallon. That's 30 pounds wow. per barrel. That's a lot. Wow. And I mean, at yeah. the upper limit, I tell people, I think about a pound and a half per five gallons. Right, right, right. Talking on the home brewing scale. Right. And but, so oh my God, that that's would be huge. times six. That'd be like six to eight pounds a barrel if we're 31 gallon barrels. Okay. Um, he's using about 30 pounds a barrel. I mean, I'm happy about that. A lot. But yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but From a business standpoint, it's good. For me, I... It, it, and does wonder, it come through though? Well, you know, I don't know because uh, A, this um, particular, many of the beers that he makes um, are very sweet, uh, high finishing gravity, mm -hmm. and they need some extra oomph. But sometimes I wonder, can you extract all the chocolate flavor from there? And if you can, is it too much? Or have you just purchased too much? 
I don't know the answer to that because it's yeah. not my beers. Of course. For, for us uh, and the beers we're tasting here, these are dosed. They're, they're different nibs uh, in these uh, beers, um, and they're dosed at about four pounds per barrel. Okay. Yes. And, and the so barrel size being just for- 31 gallons. Okay. Right, and so um, uh, you know these bottles. If, if you're on a homebrew size scale, this is 7.75 grams in a 500 mil of beer. Um, so for if you said per gallon, just divide four by 30, and you would you would get how many um, partial of a pound okay. in, in, in a gallon. Um, and that's up a little bit from what we've done before. I, I've noticed that in the past. Yeah. Um, for years past, you've been buying from Chocolate Alchemy for what? Well, six years? I, I bet at Ale Song it's been about six years. That's six right. years. Yeah. And I was, I was always surprised. And, you know, it was fine, but yeah. <laughs> I was always surprised how little you bought. Right, right. And I was like, wow. You right. Get and you got certainly got the chocolate. Yeah. I, I yeah. love yeah. Rhino Soup. And, and I, think, <laughs> I think we get up at some, and, we, and we, like I said, we did in this. And the reason for that is because this beer in particular is called Mocha Rhino Soup. The mm -hmm. idea is to have a coffee and, you know, the chocolate coffee mm -hmm. um, uh, meld. And so you don't want to call something mocha and not have it very coffee-y or very chocolatey. Right. Well, now, on, on the other hand, some of our other beers that we add it to, we might only be looking for a mouthfeel enhancement. Right. We found that some beers that taste a little more dry than you might expect or that we wanted, mm -hmm. you add a little cocoa nibs and it gives a mouthfeel to it. Um, oh, which interesting. Is, which is nice, yeah. Just Should because we try one? I want to try <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. That's, we should be drinking while we chat. We should be drinking we chat. And, and it'll be, I, I wish I brought real glasses this, this, and this this works just fine next time i'll bring some logo glasses yeah yeah I'd so while he's pouring these i'll just mention that we did trials with different dibs nibs like we have dominican republic um we have a wild bolivian columbia alchemist brewers blend that's that's your um blend of beans or no um, I'll, or, I'll talk about that yeah. in a moment okay no and problem. then uh oh, piora okay so uh, I, i'm gonna even go a step further for people so um just because I'm going to do what I do. Yeah. You called it Dominican Republic. It is, but it's specifically Zorzal. Okay. Um, this is just for my customers now. Yeah, Wild yeah. Bolivia, I remember, was uh, the Tranquilidad. Um, the Colombian is our Arauca. The Brewer's Blend is, um, you had a hand in this. Mm. This is um, the result of us tasting those 16 different chocolate right. beers yeah. when I wrote an article for Brew Your Own. Right. And this blend and... Uh, came out of that. It's gotcha. a certain blend, roasted a little higher. Yep. Um, and I'm curious what you think of it. Right. And you don't have to pat me on the back. I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm in a way flailing around, but I liked it. Yeah. So right. that's what I often right. brew. For sure. um, and then uh, Peru Pri Pure. So you probably have multiple um, varieties within a country. So just saying. Country, that's why exactly right, why yeah, I yeah, did yeah. that. that is that's sense. absolutely true. Okay. Because gotcha. I mean, yeah, like. There's different grapes in California, right. different wines just, in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. All right, so um, this is the Piora. Yeah. Um, You're so cheating. I know I'm cheating. That's I'm going, okay. <laughs> since we already did the sensory on it, <laughs> that's probably No, trash. no, feel I, free. I should feel, use my nose and my... No, no, but feel free to give me... Well, it's worth noting. Um, these have been sitting in this cold warehouse, 50 degrees, for an additional maybe... 10 days since you've right, tasted them right. on nib still. Right, right. We tasted them as a team and tasted them all blind, wrote down our notes, and then just decide what we liked and didn't like about each one. And this has still been on the nib, oh. so mm. chances are it's, it's going to be m even more concentrated. So I tasted this about a week ago. Mm -hmm. And I, um, it could be that it's the end of a really long week of filming, <sighs> doing videos, but... I don't remember having the chocolate flavor that it has now, yeah. but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, do you like it? I'm liking it. Yeah. Um, so how long would that have been on? Two weeks? And when, how Probably many? Probably so. I don't know how many days we I was gonna ask on. That. I, I, I don't recall that. It could have been two or three days. And that's another thing. I was going to ask, is, can it be too long? Well, it, I, I think it could. Um, you know, sometimes when you leave stuff on coffee beans too long, you can kind of get a vegetal oh, sort of note. Um, and so in, in our case, we usually leave cocoa nibs on for maybe two or three days. Often it's a weekend. We might okay. put them on on Friday and Monday. So try pretty, it. Short. pretty short. Pretty short. Yeah, pretty yeah. short. Yeah, we don't leave it that long. And and that may be something you tell a brewer too is like, well, how long do you have? And then the next question is, well, what is too long? And, and we've well, never pushed it to see. I was just going to ask, have you done any tests yeah. to see? Well, it'd be interesting to, you know, to leave these. The problem is every time you've opened it, more oh, oxygen has gotten right. in and stuff. So 
it would be interesting to do multiple trials, keep the oxygen out, and see. And we just, I don't know what too long is. Um, I'd just be curious, though. Yeah. What's too long? Yeah, you, you know what? It might be interesting to, to do a trial of like four different things and say every week start a new uh, sample. Yes. And so then you'd ha at, at, the, at the testing date, you'd have a four-week-old one, a three-week-old one, a two-week-old one, mm -hmm. and a one-week-old one or whatever We've done that with some uh, brewing cocos. Okay. Trying to cool. talk about um, whether they go stale. Yeah. And it turns out they peak somewhere in the three to six range. Okay. Unlike coffee. Yeah, like yeah. you want freshly ground coffee. Yeah. Brewing cocoa didn't. Well, interesting. So it, it peaked weeks okay. later. So I'd be curious to see the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, Unexpected. We could try it pretty easily. All right, cool. Yeah. So what yeah. do you think of this? Well, I think I think it's got a great chocolate flavor, a kind green? of a, 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 a sort of deep. So sometimes it depends what you're looking for too, right? That's so always that. With with a brewer, you're like, what do you want those cocoa nibs to give to the beer? For me, mm -hmm. we just want it to be a pure chocolate note, like brownies, like warm baked chocolate cookies, like. I prefer dark chocolate over milk chocolate. So to my mm -hmm. palate, I'd rather a, a sensation that has a little more dark chocolate. And when I'm tasting stuff like this, and there's a little bit in this one, but I might note when something's a little more milk chocolatey, you mm -hmm. know, um, just because that's not what I prefer over dark chocolate. Oh, got it. I, I okay. like a little bit it's of bitterness your, in there. It's your preferences. That's right. Right. Yeah. And no. so, so not only do you get some flavors from each nib because of where they were grown, but um, they can react with the beer and what you like, so. Well, and something I've noticed is a pattern with you and other folks, um, um, call him out in a good way, Wayne Wambles mm -hmm. of- uh, Cigar City. C Cigar, mm -hmm. Cigar City loves a super, used to love, a super light roasted um, Peru Piura. Mm -hmm. And the chocolate is not what you would call chocolatey. Interesting. But over and over, I'm starting to find a pattern inversely that sometimes the more acidic beans as chocolate right brew really nicely yeah right it and it's a conundrum to me right like yeah. this is a well, we'll see we're going to get to it i mean that's a big bold chocolate right we'll see if it comes through or if it In doesn't yeah right yeah. okay yeah yeah i th this one had a great smooth chocolatey flavor to it i think it had a little bit of candy notes almost like lifesaver um maybe that's maybe a fruitiness is actually what i'm trying to say um, mm -hmm. I'd pick that up a little bit. Not really like dark chocolate bitterness, but no, um, it's it's kind in of a, a weird way, maybe too approachable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I see what you mean by the candy flavor. Yeah, like I, you've said that now, and I'm like, mm, yeah, right. I see what you mean. Well, and I also think because these, mint, but these, it, these beers finish a little sweeter than 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 roasty, and so that can also enhance sort of a candy sweet flavor. Yep. Well, um, it's a clean flavor though. Mm -hmm. That that candy, it's yeah, clean. Right. Totally. Okay. Totally. Yeah. Um, want to taste the next yeah, one? Yeah, let's try that one. This is the blend? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the brewer's blend. Okay. So, I mean, oh, oh, good thing that was empty. <laughs> Probably should have saved a little bit. I guess, guess we got we have the bottle. We can to, go back towards Yes, it. we do. Wow, that just pours so viscous. In a yeah. great way. Um, I get a different nose off mm -hmm. of it. Um, I'm not sure it's better or worse, just different. Did you um, say that this one was roasted a little hotter? It or is. Or a higher temperature? It is. The end temperature is roasted hotter. Okay. Um, in some of the trials we did, there seemed to be more extractables, mm -hmm. and it, it pulled out some of the roast character a little bit more. Okay. Maybe, dr I don't know, this is why we're doing it. Right. Maybe dropped some of the chocolate notes. Okay. But it, it, it seems to be getting a good good run with other brewers, right. but I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah. To me, to me, a little bit of roastiness came out, not a... Not a harsh roastiness, but more so than the first one. Mm -hmm. And I think it gives it, um, it's nice with this beer because I think this beer has sweet from the lactose and it's a good kind of balance to have a little bit of roasted cocoa. I don't know why it would be different, but I got a vanilla note off this one. Interesting. Do you, is there any vanilla in this yet at there's all? Not a, there's not vanilla in it and, and there's not in the beer either. In the beer at all. So um, the, Any vanilla notes could come from the barrel. Just um, they aged oh, for about a year in it's bourbon It's in barrels. bourbon, of mm -hmm. course. And probably what we should have done is had a, I should have brought a bottle of Rhino Suit too, our, our base beer, which isn't we this beer, but it, it is the same recipe, right? different age. And then we'd have a control. You could just come back. I guess I'll have to come back. We'll have to film <laughs> again. Yeah, that's got a little bolder taste, a little more roasty. Oh, it does on that second taste. It's so so. There we go. I'm offering this one, but as a lover of Rhino Suit, mm -hmm. I don't think I like it yeah, as much. I don't, I don't. I think it. Um, 
it, perhaps it changes a little bit more than from the original. Yeah. If think. it was maybe a drier sure. stout, yeah. a drier imperial, yeah. I think maybe it could go really yeah. well. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that just goes to the fact that, that you've already found that that blend can work nicely with um, some beers that you've made or that other people have right, made, but right. it may not go with everybody. Well, it's beer. no, 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 just like no one bean's going to go with every chocolate people like, right. and every beer's not going to go with every person out there drinking. Right. There's no way to please everybody. Right. You brew right. for you, I assume. Yeah. So yeah, totally. Yeah, that's, yeah. So that's, that's all that matters. That's the thing is, is what's good to me is not always good to everybody, right? Right. So. I mean, Right. And, and it's very challenging for other brewers who don't live in town here because we're very lucky to be able to come well, over and smell each of the I, beans. I love having you over. Right. Um, Oakshire also came yeah. over at one point. Yeah. But I, to be able to do it is, yeah. is killer. Well, I love just going through the barrels, yeah. smelling them, yep. and just sending you home with yeah. a couple ounces here yep. and there. Yep. And we can yeah. do trials. and uh, Yeah, it's fantastic. But that's what you have to do is trials to get to know the, that's it. the beans, the yeah. nibs, and uh, things like that. So makes me almost, I hadn't thought of this, Chocolate Alchemy setting up a a brewer's, you know, set of five, um, yeah. here, go, go do this people. Right. You right. Know? Yeah. Um, see which one you like. Yeah. A that's brewer's actually, sampler. Right. Uh, yeah. That, that's a great idea. I hmm. mean, they do it with hops. They do it with, with barley. Do they really? Okay. Um, yeah. 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 Oh, Where so maybe. Sales, maybe. sales people go around with, you know, ounce packets and you can't make a whole batch of beer on it, but you can no. do a little trial. Well, just what you've done here. And, yep. You know, yep. and you can make hop tea and, um, it gets you somewhere. Yep. Yep, yep. So that that might be a great idea. Okay. So right. yeah, like I said, you you have to put beer in your mouth to know if you like it. You probably have to put cocoa nibs in your nose to know if you yep. like the smell. Well, and there's the a synergy. Yeah. Like there's absolutely synergy that it's like oh, you, more than once, you walked out of here convinced this was the nib. Right. And then you're like, no, we're wrong. Right. We don't want that one. Yeah, we want this yeah. one. When you go back. <laughs> yeah. That's totally it. Totally. Yeah. That happened uh, more times than I can count. Yeah, for sure. And sure. you've gotten better at dialing them in now, but you still took five. Yeah, yeah. The good news is we had time to do these trials. And I mean, let's be honest, you probably can grab many, many things, if yes. not anything, and come up with a pretty good beer. I mean, but if you neither really of these were, were bad. No, no, no. <laughs> nothing wrong with them, but they, but they come off a little different and depending they on totally what, do. what the brewer's goal is, is right. kind of what you're going to get. Yep. So. All right. Um, while I pour number three, okay. I want, so I have a, you can, you can tell me you don't like it, but I have a, a pet thing I've wanted to see. The chocolate in these big beers is the thing people do. Yeah. Do you think we, there'd be any good way to do, you know, a chocolate ESB? Yeah, I, or, I think you can put chocolate in But something in light that's just, or, I mean, yep. out here. A chocolate IPA? <laughs> I mean, you could do it. Uh, and, and have it be good is what I'm getting. Right, at. right, right. I mean, well, that's no, the key. I, I, I've had I've had chocolate blondales. Have um, you? Yeah, yeah. I've, or I, chocolate mild, even. Yep, yep. Anything in a you could do it in a blonde beer. Um, you could do it in a in an amber ale, ESB, English pale ale. You know, the hops might clash a little bit if you had a too hoppy of a beer. I mean, I, I'll bet you someone could easily come up with a, a hoppy beer with chocolate that works, but I haven't had one yet. <laughs> um, I haven't had a chance to taste them. I, I think it'd be great to do it with a with a um, lighter beer um, because it would just pop more, right? Yeah. Depending on how much you used, right, and, right? And you would really taste those flavors of the chocolate, and and you'd get a better sense of I think what those flavors are in sure. beer. So yeah. So which which uh, these two variety do we have here? Um, this one is our Colombian Arauca. Okay. Um, I'll let you give your opinion. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the how the chocolate comes out. Okay. So that's an interesting one just because I know the chocolate. There's okay. a, there's a, maybe a citrus note to it mm -hmm. that the chocolate has that I'm getting off of this. Okay. I might be self, um, but you bias because biasing you know what myself it's be possible. Otherwise. I try not to do that. Right. But right. maybe. Yeah, that's one thing too. Mm. When, when we see the notes that you make on the different um, beans that you have, and it says, this one tastes like blueberries, this uh -huh. one tastes like rose petals, this one is citrusy. Um, a lot of times, with depending on what beer we're making, we want it to be like chocolate, like the classical right. chocolate. And so when those... Uh, flavors come out, it's like, maybe it's a bonus. You're like, oh, cool. It had right. a little blueberry character to it, but it first and foremost should be 
Coco. Well, right? and here's a question. I, I have my own opinion and just a little bit from hearing other people. Do you find my chocolate tasting notes correlate much to what you get extracted by water and alcohol? You know, um, sometimes, and some of that could be suggested, suggested where you go, oh yeah, I guess I do get some blueberry, but, but it's not big. And you would really have to, you know, in my opinion, you really have to analyze it hard. And most of the time, the nibs that we're using in some of our beers, it's a just a piece of the puzzle, right? It's well, not, oh, the, course, it's it's not, not it. the primary. No, never. Um, now, if you did that blonde idea or an amber ale or something where it was mm -hmm. a lower impact beer, lower gravity, lower alcohol, you might um, really pick up those notes more and you might want those. Mm -hmm. In our case, we just put it in such a big beer that, that um, it, you're, you're getting some, but you have to search for it, I guess. Well, I remember um, when we did our flight of 16, Frankly, it was went into a much lighter beer. It went into basically a right. brown ale. Right. There was some sourness there. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. The nibs definitely gave some sourness that was not pleasant right. on all of them. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, do you think that always extracts out, um, or and that the the big beer is covering it? You know, um, or, I it's hard to say what that kay. was was truly from, but there was such differences in all those beers that we tried. Um, that was kind of remarkable. <laughs> and when we try these, at least when these we did very prior, similar. there's a lot of similarities. Right. So, you know, um, I, I, I'm not sure. Fair enough. I, I can tell you that many big beers, I guess to your question, it can hide much of the nuances that you yeah. might find in a, in a well, coconut. Well, and I picked the brown ale because I wanted to highlight yeah. everything. Right. And and maybe see what doesn't really doesn't work. Right. And we found yeah we found some totally. of those. There were some that weren't that good. There yeah. were some That's that right. were not that good. Yeah, but it might have gotten totally hidden if we tried it in these. Yeah, totally. Like yep. just this. I mean, the differences in these are yeah subtle. They are, they're very subtle. All the first three we've tried, I think, have there's, there's so, been some nuances. Yeah. Subtle. So what do you think? I or like okay. it. Um, it it didn't hit me over the head. I think it had some of the sort of roasty bitterness that the 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 blend did the second one. Mm -hmm. But. I can see what you're saying about citrus too. I picked that up a little bit and it's almost like, not so much lemon lime, but almost like orange and tangerine yep. and tropical maybe yeah. even. Um, pineapple, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Well, pour number four and then- uh, All right, all right, then, uh, well, you it'll, twist it'll my arm. To you. It'll come twist to Twist my arm there, all right, good. Okay, so yeah, two empties. One thing when we were um, doing our, our sensory panel at the brewery, um, it's amazing how the cocoa nib, the different cocoa nibs can not only change flavor and aroma, mm -hmm. but they can even do something to the mouthfeel. Like we'll make some comments on sort of um, body and mouthfeel and uh, you know maybe fuller, drier, mm -hmm. in small ways, not in big, small ways. but it can change this, more than just the flavor. This was thicker. This it Piura. It seemed like it. It seemed like these, it, yeah. These are yeah. Not, they're not thin by any means. Yeah, right, right. But yeah. All right, so this is that Wild Bolivia. So this is the first one that's made me think I recognize this. Okay. Like, oh, this is Rhino Suit. Yeah, right. Or, or Mocha, whatever. Right. But this right. is the first one that has a, right. a subtlety. Yeah. Well, that's... that's uh, good that you mentioned that because that's the first <laughs> thing I thought was it doesn't go over the top. It's not bold. It's not bitter. It's not roasty. Um, it does taste more like the base beer. It does. Not like there's nothing there. Oh, right. Not but, that there's nothing you know, there. It's got a cocoa flavor. It does. But there isn't, I think, I think it's definitely different than this last one we just tried. Very, just side very. By side. Um, the, the Arauca I definitely find, and these are, I mean, these are so subtle differences, right. but Brighter, mm -hmm. the Arauca's a little brighter, okay. and I I lean toward less bright. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, you, and I, I I'm not sure if it's I say this accusational uh -huh. or in a loving way is is um, part of my affinity for you is you've got this amazing palette and and ability to blend and balance things mm -hmm. that normally I wouldn't drink bluntly, and you've got a way that you've got a deft hand. Wow. Um, you've done a couple sours that I would, anybody else, I'd be like, no, I'm not, I, it's not only sours. Yeah. And I, I, yours, I'm like, yeah. 
Okay. Well, all right. That's good. You're being too kind. I'm being honest. I, I appreciate I'm, that. I'm being really honest. Uh, you know, one thing we try to do <sighs> a, a, when we make beers is, and, and we've done this since day one, mm -hmm. is make uh, high character beers with a lot of personality, but that are balanced, drinkable. You always subtle. nail the balance. Um, as a business person, I always want to make sure <laughs> you can drink a second glass, not just a <laughs> Good first man. glass. Yes. There are a lot of beers in our country right now, in, in our, actually, I should say world, but the craft beer industry that they are, are mm. too boozy, They're, too hoppy, they too are. sweet, too this, too that, and mm -hmm. you have to have balance. And if you were drinking wine or eating a chocolate bar, it should be enjoyable, right? and you should want some more. Correct. And we, we take that approach with beer. We don't always hit it, but I thank you for recognizing when we do. It's so. it you hit it more times than not yeah. in ways that utterly surprise me. Yeah. Um, well, and 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 some you. of your um, you'll have to to remind me the details, but some of your wine barrel yeah. age that get sour. Yeah, yeah. There's it's it's our sour base that we add uh, uh, wine grapes to. Oh, and that's some it. of those beers are like fifty percent wine grapes, fifty percent yes. beer. So, so. Um, our roaster Noah. Mm -hmm. Who probably br roasted what you guys got? Right. He freaking loves those. Oh, nice. Oh, Good. he just he just Fantastic. he is all over those. Yeah. Um, we went and went to one of your tasting rooms. Yeah. The all the staff here. Yeah. And he just Fantastic. couldn't say enough about them. Maybe we should try some ways to get some cocoa in it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say no. It goes with wine. <laughs> they right? do. I mean, let's just I, put them in the same beer. I've wanted to too much. I, no, <laughs> I've wanted to work with a, a a vinter. Yeah. And get nibs into a red wine. Right. Right. I've just never been able to yeah. do that. But if there's a if there's a red wine producer out there <laughs> and you want to test, please reach out to me. Um, He's ready to make it happen. I'm ready to make it happen. I'll send you samples. Yeah. There. Just boom. Yeah. Um, big, bold red Zinfandel. Well, maybe you good know, news. Cabernet. We just got our wine license, so we can talk later. All we'll right, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. We know okay. maybe some Ale Song wine coming soon. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so what do you think? Is it, w would that be a contender you, at this moment? You know, from what I taste right there, yeah. it, it maybe just doesn't have enough impact. Oh, okay. Um, because here's the thing, too. Oh, I see what you mean. It just let... Yeah, it, it's there. And it's. I did say before that we do like accents and things like that. Right. But you want it to be noticeable. Right. right? You don't you, want to waste money as a businessman. I was just going to say that. You, <laughs> yeah. It's called Mocha Rhino Suit. It should have coffee and chocolate in it. And, and it, tell it, that it's there. That's right. That's right. And right. I think when I, when I drink this one... I'll, Drinking the base rhino suit, there's a lot of chocolate malts in there. Pale mm -hmm. chocolate, dark chocolate, some other caramel malts. You shared the recipe with me. Yeah. Much and thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And, and it wasn't as good as yours. Well. It was. It wasn't. Sometimes scaling down doesn't always work. It doesn't. So maybe, no. <laughs> maybe not. But, but you already get some chocolate notes you in do. the base beer, right? Yeah. Um, and so to not elevate that very much more is maybe not enough. Right. I agree. So. Yeah. Um, so while good, I don't think it's uh, very impactful. Fair. Yeah. And it didn't hurt it. No. Right. right. Yeah. There was so. nothing. There was no adverse flavors or or negative effects. So, still good. Okay. Um, number five. Dominican. The Zorzal. And because I didn't know you brought the surprise coffee. Yeah. 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 Um, we'll we'll have to recycle one of the glasses. That definitely tastes different than this one. Yeah, it does. It it, it has it has more of a cocoa uh, coconut. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, but it doesn't have the same sort of fruity or sweetness or mm -hmm. even citrus. Well, I was going to say drier. Yeah, it's. I was going to say wine. Maybe mm -hmm. we were just talking about wine, but it, which I, I kind of like yeah. a little bit. It tastes almost the like sweetness. it has some like it has some tannins. You know when mm -hmm. you when you have a, a wine with tannins and it kind of dries out the tongue a little bit. Yeah. That, that's kind of there. Given these have been an extra week. Right. What, where would you have picked it? Or would you have picked any of these now? Yeah, um, I really liked how this Dominican Republic one came out. Yep. Um, uh, the Wild Bolivian was a little too... Um, neutral. Neutral, yep. 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 And I think uh, the, the character of these two really came... I like them. They're unique. Mm -hmm. I think probably the Dominican... Of, of the five I just tasted now, I, agree. I would say it's got a nice, bold cocoa note that mm -hmm. isn't too anything. It, it isn't too much. isn't yeah. too little. I would tend to agree. Um, and it, I would be almost interested to see if, if the pair together... 
And you've done oh. that in a couple of years in the past, yeah. done a, a blend. That'd be interesting. You've totally well. done a blend. Yeah, yeah. Especially, anyway. especially if you have a couple that you sort of like and can't choose. Just yeah. blend them just together. Just throw them together. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, um, I can tell you that whatever one we did use, and you should sure, sure, find liner notes later, yeah, yeah. it's the same country of origin as the coffee beans that we used oh. because we liked it. And I think we were at that point that we couldn't decide between two. I think some people liked one, some people liked another. Right. And we said, let's just use the one in the same country that the coffee <laughs> Absolutely. came from. So. I know that question I was going to ask you. Yeah. Um, we did this all throughout that 16 beer tasting. You were um, putting these in the secondary. Right. Right. Do you have you ever played with different editions, and what did you find if you did? Right. Or do you have any opinions? Right. Right now, we mostly do it like a dry hop. You use it after fermentation um, in in the secondary tank just okay. before packaging. It just gives them, in my opinion, the most impact uh, to the aroma and mm -hmm. some of the flavors after fermentation is done. I have put it though on the hot side of the brewing. Right. Um, some of that has been like cocoa solids rather right. than nibs. Mm -hmm. But we've also bagged up some nibs and done it. Um, the, that was at a previous brewery making a big uh, chocolate imperial porter. Right. Um, and that one was very flavor forward too because it also had pumpkin. It had pumpkin spices wow. in it, and it and it was kind of big. Um, but I think that the heat from the boiling yeah. can help extract some of those flavors totally. as well, right? And then the, the, the cocoa solids, it was there to melt. Was it, oh, oh, so actually chocolate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and the cold side, you never have any head retention problems because you're not extracting any right. oil. Right, right, Okay. right. Yeah, that's the other part of it too is... Um, Hot side can get used, not much, but right. some oil. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah. a lot of people are worried about head retention and things like that. And, and maybe that's a reason to use, not overdo it, you know? Oh, right. Um, yeah. Because... If you get that oil in there, you're gonna kill the head. Just boom. Yeah. Have you ever played with just the husk? I haven't. Um, no, but it would be really interesting to do because there's a lot of aroma from those, you know. Yeah. Um, but when have I did, you made one? When I ever did hot side extraction, mm -hmm. well, there's two things. Whenever I did hot side extraction, um, I got a lot of astringency mm -hmm. that just, I, I didn't find pleasant. Yeah. It was like that graininess from an over sparging right. that right. I just did not ever like. Right. I've had a few people do it. They say they like it. Yep. Not me. Yeah. Um, and they never seemed to play well on, on the secondary. Right. But on the, and I wouldn't want to put them there due to even if roasted, they can have bacterial counts. Okay. Yeah. Right. And I just, they'd scare me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, and would you like to try the one with coffee in it? I would love yeah, to try the last one. So, so here, let's, let's, just, let's... We'll just pick any glasses. Yeah, it's fine. And now, I'm going to warn you real quick. Um, we used a different technique this time for getting the coffee in. We used just whole beans. We've done cold water extract before yeah. cold-pressed coffee, basically. We've used some grounds. This time, we decided to use beans. I don't recall how many pounds per barrel. Um, Feels like it should be pretty subtle, then? I, that's what I would think. Wait till okay, you try that. all right, all right. I'm going to wait for you. Yeah. And thanks for that generous <laughs> pour. No problem. <laughs> We got more for you too. Oh, yeah, man! Oh, pops right out of the glass, that doesn't just, it? That I, we, we were we were shocked there was that much. I'm I'm, I hope. I mean, I trust you. You've done it. It almost feels a little too coffee forward. Well, um, it's perfectly coffee forward. <laughs> but of course, it, you say it that. is on the high side, and um, I think that's okay. And here's why: in oh, most of our so trials, clean, um, our beers that are aged in barrels, this one's twelve and a half percent. It has a great shelf life, and so people will have it yeah. for the next year, the next two years. <laughs> we noticed that all kind of additives to these beers sort of mellow, mellow fade, um, blend together, Integrate. and so. Uh, we had a 2020 Mocha Rhino suit that mm -hmm. we were just drinking recently, and it was not very coffee-y. It was coffee-y, oh. coffee-like, mm -hmm. yep. coffee flavor, but it was lower impact. So to me, uh, starting out a little higher is okay. Well, it's better than too low. And I, I always worry that, that someone's going to think I'm just complimenting them because they're here. Yeah. But, I, and I'm, but I'm dead serious here is... Um, in many ways, in many ways, I'm a beer purist. Mm -hmm. I like beer yeah. in my beer. Beer I, tastes like beer. I often don't like um, coffee beers. Mm -hmm. They get this weird astringency. And mm -hmm. I love coffee. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, that's off-putting. Yeah. This is so clean. Yeah. This is the flavor I like. Nice. If you're at, if I was going to have coffee in my beer. 
It's got a real fresh aroma, it almost like so you're drinking fresh. a cup of coffee. It is, it is. But and it's, yeah, and now I think that that coffee uh, mm. character in there, and this is the problem anytime you make a beer like this and add multiple adjuncts, yep. is that one can sort of can sort of overshadow the other. And so I don't think you smell the cocoa nibs exactly mm. the same way you do in these. No. I do taste chocolate notes, um, but, it, but it did mute it or cover it a what, bit. What I will say though is two different things. Um, Earlier this week, we were um, doing some espresso pours and making mochas, mm -hmm. fresh mochas, yeah. and um, with milk. Yeah. And that milk chocolate coffee yeah, totally reminds me there. of this. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. the the your your lactose. Yeah. Right. Has totally gives just, it a creaminess. It's right? It's so yeah. creamy. It, it's like a cold latte. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the best way, it's still a yeah. monster, luscious beer. Yeah, it's it's uh, mm. full flavored, full of character. Great cocoa, great chocolate. Yeah, um, I think it's gonna be and, and I'm, I'm, you know a beer that's not carbonated yet still tastes pretty good. You know, I just I hadn't even thought about yeah. that till just now. Yeah, which is gonna change the aromas a little bit too. You know, these are all non carbonated. And, and I, ha I honestly hadn't even thought of that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm used to this kind of beer, but you're right. Yeah, I, no carbonation yet. Wow, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um. Hey, uh, I'm not. I'm about to try to wind this up here, but thank you. You're welcome. Do you have more to say or want to input on on people's selection of, of nibs? I, I think the only thing I would say is Please. something I kind of alluded to before, yeah, yeah. which is um, depending on the beer you make and the character you're looking for is the first thing you do in selecting the nibs that you want. And I think anyone who is sourcing and and processing them and roasting them like you do can mm -hmm. give all kinds of input and you can give some flavor notes from what you smell or taste from finished chocolate, let's say. But you're not gonna know unless you get it into beer like we did here. Right. Try different things out and try different levels of it. Um, I think you can go with the starting point. You can find that from other brewers. You can find it from me. You can find it from um, wh whomever. You you have an idea of how many pounds per barrel, pounds per gallon, right. pounds we do per now. gallon. Yep. And, um, and then you just go from there. If you need more, it's the beauty of cooking food and making beer. Um, it just takes us a little longer. That's right. You just have to try. And if you don't like it, make another one. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you said they could, you know, in a, you hinted they could reach out to you. Yeah. Where are people going to find you? Uh, so you can find us um, on all the social media platforms, Alesong Brewing. Um, I'm Alesong Matt. Um, but also my email is matt at alesongbrewing.com. Okay. You can reach out to me. I don't have all the answers. Um, but I might be able to help in some small way to make okay. a good beer. I think that's the best answer to give people yeah. is don't pretend you know everything. Right. No, I don't. Because I certainly I don't. don't. Yeah. Oh I learn God. I learn by doing things like this, and I know you do too. That's yeah. why we're here today. That's why we're here. And um, and we'll figure it out someday, but not yet. I'm not sure we ever will, no. but we're going to have a great time <laughs> getting there. Not when you have an artisan project, product, uh, an agricultural product. Things are always changing a bit. and so. The, there we were winding up, but I, I want to <laughs> echo on that. It's an agricultural product. That's right. These things change that's right. every year. That's right. And that's, to me, the glory of it. Yep. They change every year. Yep, yep. And same with our beers. We well, so I mean we your beers. Brew, yeah, I, we, I right. meant your beers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't brew for consistency. We brew for really good vintage beers. And I love sometimes that. it changes a little bit. And so you have to do new trials every time to, to make sure you're using the right cocoa nib. Right. So. And, and, and I, I have a feeling, as a sort of a last parting note, is, I mean, years ago, you guys sometimes came back a couple times. Because you kept, quote unquote, getting it wrong. Right, right. You don't misstep anymore. Right, right. We got to know what we like and well, know right. where and we're going. And you know where not to go right. now. Totally. So yep. you just, yep. now it's just fine tuning every time. Yep, that's right. So. That's right. You mess up enough times, you figure it out eventually. <laughs> Messing up some place to um, right. learn something. That's right. I love it. Yeah. Well, hey. thanks for having me. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, appreciate All right. it. Um, take care, guys. Check out Matt. Check out All Song. Um, I, can't, <laughs> I can't say enough about Rhino Suit. Take care. Cheers.